Here we go! Hey guys, and welcome back to another Mystery Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, where we explore mysterious video game stories, rumors, and hoaxes. And ever since I put out my first video covering a few of the mysteries on this iceberg and in the abyss below, many of you have asked for a follow-up. So here we are, back again. And just like in the last video, I'll be picking and choosing some mysteries on or off the iceberg that are my favorites or I think are most interesting. Only this time, we'll be going in deep. I'm talking cult symbolism, curses, and yeah, it's gonna be a wild one. But Tetra, obviously these are all fake. Who could actually even believe these? Stop. Let's lighten the f*** up. And with that, let's -a go. Now, several mysteries on the Mario 64 iceberg are uh, pretty far out there. So, starting things off, here at the bottom of the iceberg, we have Mario 64 being a Freemason initiation. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty curious how this one is spun. So this mystery dates back to the far-off era of 2018 by Twitter user Owen Cyclops. And in a Twitter thread, it is explained just how Mario 64 is a digital Masonic or Illuminati ritual. So those that believe this theory first point to the game beginning in Peach's Castle, which they think is a symbol for a Masonic hall. Then, the checkered flooring in the castle is thought to symbolize our world of polarized opposites or something. Now, I'm certainly no cult expert, but apparently a solar disc, red carpeting, and the room being three-layered is also symbolic of... something? The coins in the game are also thought to be pentacles, symbols often associated with cults, and bob on Battlefield, with its trek up the mountain, is apparently related to common occult imagery, which deals with tall mountains with many obstacles along the way, having a regal or divine symbol at its top. And what's at the top of the mountain at bob on Battlefield? That's right, a king, which the player has to battle. There are more tweets here in this thread dealing with Mario enacting his own death in Jolly Roger Bay and such, but honestly, I had to stop there. Most of this was just getting way too far out there for me. So no, I don't really believe that this game is in any way a digital Freemason initiation, but if there's one thing I gotta give it, I guess some of the connections, albeit a big stretch, are pretty interesting. Oh yeah, also the El Israel or Eternal Star statue is apparently a Masonic pyramid. Just thought you'd like to know. Alright, next up is the Bowser Room. And this is allegedly a secret room that some players recall being found in Super Mario 64. To those that apparently remember seeing this room, it is described as being a basic, small room, usually with a picture of Bowser and Peach on the wall, as well as some furniture here and there. Now apparently both the way to access this room as well as its exact layout differs depending on the personalization of the game. Now I've already went in depth into the whole personalization thing in a previous video, so be sure to check that out if you want more information. But anyway, in short, some believe that every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized to the player, and that's why players report having different memories of the game such as remembering different stages, characters, and more. Anyways, getting into Bowser's room has been shown in footage of several YouTube channels. From BLJing above the waterfall outside, to just entering a door in a certain part of the castle. And like I said, as you can see in the footage from these encounters, Bowser's room looks different in every instance. This one here has 8 red coins to collect for a secret star, and this one has you actually fighting Bowser in it. Now, although there are apparently unconfirmed reports of this Bowser room being Miyamoto's favorite room in the game or something, this theory actually was popularized from an Oni Plays video from 2017 in which they basically acknowledge that it's fake. I made this fake f***ing screenshot and I was like, yeah, <laughs> they'll all believe me now. So since there's nothing really in the game and its source code to support the existence of a room like this, I'm gonna have to strongly doubt its existence. Alright, let's take a step back into the real world, and next talk about a mystery that's a bit more grounded in reality. Although we've been getting massive Nintendo leaks what seems like every month recently, they were much less common in years past, and this one leak is what has come to be known as the Oman Archive. This is apparently a leak of Nintendo documents and files from a source at SGI, 
or Silicon Graphics Incorporated, the company behind developing the Nintendo 64 hardware. Anyways, these leaked documents were apparently uploaded to the internet as a compressed folder simply with the name Oman, where the name of this mystery originates. So legend goes that this leak contained confidential information in how the Nintendo 64 operated, and as such is believed to have been the catalyst for what would kickstart the early Nintendo 64 emulation development scene. That said, since this information was distributed and obtained illegally, since the files were clearly not meant to be disclosed, developing emulation based on these files could net emulation developers into legal trouble, so as such, many developers refuse to use this material. Now, although the archive is actually real, and is even documented on sites like RetroReversing.com, the archive is still shrouded in a few mysteries and theories. Firstly, there is debate as to what or who the file Oman is named after. Could it be the last name of the employee who leaked it, a code name for the leaker, something to do with the country of the same name? No one really knows for certain. Then there's the question of what ended up happening to the leaker. I've seen most theorize that they got sued by Nintendo for breaching a non-disclosure agreement, or they went into hiding. But more radical theories suggest that this whole data leak was actually a fake red herring of sorts to throw fans off of the personalization artificial intelligence that SGI was really working on at this time, allegedly. Similarly, other fans question the archive's authenticity, and they theorize that the Oman archive leak was censored, and once again, the true nature of it, being the personalization thing, was kept from the public. You know, I actually like this mystery. It's a blend of actual real-world events with a bit of crazy theories on the side. Next, we have the theory that Hazy Maze Cave is actually the castle's septic or sewage system. And this is another theory that's not complete bullshit. This theory basically just comes off of the visuals of both the entrance to the course as well as the course itself. So first, in the entrance to the stage, pipes can be made out on the wall textures. And have you ever stopped to consider just what is this strange undulating goop in the middle here? Well, it could be dirty toilet water. Yellow gas that causes Mario pain? clearly peaches farts. And the more you start to believe this theory, the more you question just what exactly these rolling rocks really are. And wait, what's Mario's occupation? A plumber? Hmm... Well, at least he used to be. Like I said, this theory actually does have some merit to it. Sure, some of the things are a stretch, but I don't really care for this stage and thought it was always crap anyway, so I think it's pretty fitting. One of the most iconic parts of Peach's castle is the stained glass portrait of the princess seen on the outside and in the foyer. Well, there's also a theory that postulates that throughout the game's events, Peach is actually trapped behind the stained glass window. Now sure, at the end of the game, that's where she appears from, but if you look at the stained glass outside and then from the inside, it's quite clear that there's a big gap in between. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this rumor. Some just think that there's a big gap between these two stained glass windows and that Peach was just trapped up there the whole time and Mario could have just broken the glass at any time to break her out. Alright, now let's dive down deep into the abyss with these last two. The first of these is the mystery of delicious cake. Just like Bowser's Room we discussed earlier, delicious cake is another anomalous level allegedly accessible in certain versions of the game. This is apparently a very small basic level with just a large cake with a star floating above it with some coins. When entering the stage, apparently Mario would be greeted with a message from Peach. Oh Mario, I am so glad to see you. I baked this cake for us to eat. There's a problem. I'm stuck inside the walls. Mario, you have to save us from that Koopa King. I am channeling all of my star energy just to talk to you, Mario. Please take the star atop the cake. Hopefully it will help you in your journey. Good luck, Mario. Now, fans that believe this rumor suspect that this may be some leftover beta version of the game's prologue before it was changed to just receiving a letter from Peach. Unfortunately, like many of the other rumors, there's nothing in the game's code to suggest that this ever existed, so if in theory it did, it would have to be from some beta build that hasn't been made public yet. 
But as far as I've seen, the delicious cake is actually just a joke plot hole that some fans have pointed out. As Peach promises Mario a cake at the start, and then a delicious cake at the end, leaving the whereabouts of the original not delicious cake a mystery. And now, last up for this video is the theory that Super Mario 64's director and producer actually stole the idea from someone else. And although stole may be a little bit too much of a harsh word, this actually is apparently another real world story to actually happen. In 2013, Jez San, founder of Argonaut Software, who were behind the development of the Croc series, went on to say that Super Mario 64's development was greatly influenced by a Croc prototype. The founder mentioned that as part of a deal with Nintendo, their studio had prototyped a 3D platforming game for Nintendo, using Yoshi as the playable character. Now, Nintendo doesn't take too kindly to other studios using their characters without explicit consent, so apparently Nintendo seeing Yoshi in this prototype made them terminate the deal that they had had. Anyways, Mr. San mentions that this prototype they made was very similar to the final version of Super Mario 64, and he alleges that Shigeru Miyamoto even implied it himself. He basically said that Super Mario 64 had the look and feel of the prototype they developed, and that Miyamoto came up to him after some show, and basically thanked him for the idea, and said that Argonaut Studios would be compensated fairly with royalties from the game. However, Mr. San went on to say that this may not have been the case, since as far as he saw, their agreement was terminated. And Nintendo went on to cancel the original release of Star Fox 2, which Argonaut Studios helped develop, and then used much of that code in Star Fox 64, without paying Argonaut Studios a penny. Now this of course is just one side of the story, and obviously it's not clear what the stipulations were in their agreement and whatnot, and perhaps Nintendo and Miyamoto were fully within their rights to work from what they had seen in this prototype. Regardless, there's just something strange about thinking that one of the most iconic games in the world could be influenced by a prototype Yoshi game that would eventually be released as Croc Legend of the Gobbos. I'm curious as to what you guys think about some of these anomalies on the Super Mario 64 iceberg. Obviously, some are more grounded in reality than others, but I think it's still fun to speculate and suspend disbelief, at least for a little while. And yeah, if you enjoyed this, be sure to check out some of my other mystery bits, like the first one I made on the Super Mario 64 iceberg, by clicking on the card right here. If you guys are interested, I might make another Iceberg video in the future, but I think I'm going to take a break for a bit. As much as I love mystery bits, I do want to get back to tackling some other stuff. In any case, be sure to subscribe, swing by my other social media things, which are all linked down in the description below, check out my merch over at tetrabigaming.com, or become an epic channel member for some extra channel perks. Click on that join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you! in a bit.